Hello, I'm Lonnie West with LHZ Preamps, and today I want to answer the question of what happens to your active preamp when the battery starts to die. This is a question I get asked several times a month, and usually from people that are coming from a passive base background into using an active preamp for the first time. It's a natural concern, I think, because modern electronics, we're so used to them just dying suddenly when the batteries expire. Um, but older analog stuff doesn't work in the same way. So let's go jump to the desktop and take a look and see what happens when we lose battery voltage with a active base preamp. So what we're looking at is the Isotope RX10 audio editor, and this actually overlays a normal waveform display, which is this blue waves that you see, over a spectrogram. And this allows us to see kind of two aspects of our audio to kind of understand what's going on. When I test the LHZ preamps, I send it a series of sweep, sine wave sweep files to see how well the frequency response is, is doing. And then I actually send it some recorded audio bass samples to make sure that it just sounds right to my ears. Uh, the sweep files are these blocks that you see on the left side of the screen. And they range from this small block here, which is about the normal playing volume, if you're just playing lightly or moderately with your fingers or a pick, all the way up to the big one on the far left hand side, which is about the amplitude you get when you're really hammering on the bass hard. And the sweep files are nothing more than just sine waves that run from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And you'll notice in the background, the spectrogram shows that the audio is running a line from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, just like we expect. So what we're looking at now is the response when we have the preamp dived. So we have the bass control all the way up, we have the treble control all the way up, and this is the way that most users will use the HasLabs or LHC preamps. And the EQ curve from our sine wave sweep now looks like this. At normal volume, it looks like an hourglass shape. You have a significant boost at the bass end and then a boost at the treble end. The interesting thing about the uh, LHZ and the HasLabs preamp is that as the amplitude increases and you get into that nonlinear range, the EQ response also changes. Um, you'll see that as it gets louder, you get this more prominent uh, mid-high hump in the middle part that, that really peaks out there. And in the spectrogram, you'll notice as it gets louder, we go from having just a single line of our sine wave to having these other lines show up on the very high end and uh, at the stream cases on the very low end as well. And these are artifacts that happen when the preamp starts entering its non-linear range. And it starts to roll over, much like a tube amp does. This is where it starts introducing distortion and artifacts. And this is very indicative of the common traits that people hear in, in a HasLab type preamp. So at nine volts, let's listen to a sample of uh, that we're gonna be comparing as we see what happens when the voltage drops. Pretty typical Spectre nine volt. So when it drops to seven volts, watch what happens to the EQ and watch these peaks on the, on the uh, audio. I'll flip it back and forth a couple times. So we see two things happening. We see the, the treble starting to fall off and we see the bass starting to fall off. Um, we still have the hourglass shape, but it's starting to erode a little bit on the very high treble. Um, and we also saw that the peaks started to come off a little bit on the top. And if we listen to it at seven volts, it really doesn't sound that much different. Now we have a different way of looking at this too. So let's go into Adobe Audition now I have these staged up where I can have all these different voltage uh, waveforms and subtract them from one another. So what this allows us to do is hear the difference between two waveforms. So in this case, we have our nine volt reference, the one that we started with, and the seven volt, and I'm inverting the seven volt waveform. So I'm subtracting it from the original one. So what we're gonna hear is the difference between the two of them. So let's listen to that. Not much difference except for you'll hear those crackles where those peaks disappeared, and that's what's missing on the seven volt. So let's go back into RX now. 
So what happens when we go down to 5 volts? Again, I'll toggle between these a few times. And what you're looking at is changes over here, starting to get significant changes on the EQ curve. Although the normal EQ curve still looks pretty normal, except losing a little top end. But we do see a lot more of the tops getting clipped off now. Particularly if we compare to the original 9 volts to 5 volts. Quite a bit of difference. But again, the normal EQ curve is pretty close to the same. So let's listen to this. Compared to 9 volts. Still not bad. So let's go back and do our comparison in Audition. This time we're going to be comparing 5 volts against 9 volts. And I'm, going to, I'm expecting to hear a more degradation of the audio. So now we're hearing more of those artifacts, and this is the peaks being lost when we enter that non-linear region. As the voltage decreases, the linear range of that preamp decreases, so we have more audio that's now hitting that non-linear region, so which is why we hear that difference. So let's say you have ignored changing your battery, and you haven't really heard these differences, and you let it go down to 3 volts. You should never be using your 9 volt battery at 3 volts. If you are, you may as well just stick a potato on your base, put two forks in it, and run your base off of a potato battery, because seriously, don't do it. At 3 volts, we see that our EQ is seriously impacted at this point. Uh, everything's rolling off, uh, we're losing a lot of treble, and as expected, we see that it's really starting to clip the signal. So looking at the 9 volt original signal compared to 3 volt, I expect this to sound terrible. Yeah, and it sounds very distorted, overdriven at this point. I'm not even going to bother doing the comparison because at this point we can hear the difference. Here's 9 volts. And 3 volts. The high end is gone, there's more clipping, there's more distortion, it just sounds bad. Now this does bring up the question of what is the difference between 9 volts and 18 volts? Because there is a lot of conversation online about the difference between the two. Uh, so let's take a look at that and see how that, those compare. So as we toggle between 9 volts and 18 volts, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to watch our, our frequency response on the sweep curves and we're going to look for differences in the audio. And I'll toggle these a few times just to see. Now we do see some interesting changes on the, on the EQ side. This hourglass shape, interestingly, now goes all the way up uh, as the volume increases and only starts to fall off at the very extreme. And we'll also notice that these high-end artifacts that we see at you know, lower and moderate volumes pretty much disappear completely and we're only getting those artifacts at the very extremes. And this makes sense because at 18 volts we have a lot larger linear range so we're not really going to be pushing that preamp into that kind of tube like distortion so we're not going to be generating those high end artifacts. Sound wise, let's compare them. <laughs> Nine volts. They sound almost identical, don't they? Let's do the comparison in Audition. So now we are going to be comparing our 9 volt reference to our 18 volt, and again, subtracting one from the other, and let's see what kind of difference we have here. Did you catch that? Almost nothing. I'll play it again. The only difference we really saw from that was just a blip where there were a couple peaks showing, which is interesting. So as I flip back and forth, we can see that there's just a couple of these really high peaks that change in the waveform, but not much else. It would be very easy to assume that, well, there's not much difference between 9 volts and 18 volts, but I'll say this. It really depends on how you play and what you're playing through and your genre of music. If you're a a moderate to soft player, there's very little difference between the 9 and 18 volt uh, voltages on the LHZ or the Haslabs. 
But if you're an aggressive player, you're playing really hard, you are going to hear a difference. Uh, the 18 volts will sound more natural and transparent. It won't get those overtones that we uh, would get off of the 9 volt when we're playing aggressively. It'll be a little cleaner. So that's it. I hope I answered some questions about uh, what happens when the uh, 9 volt battery uh, starts to fail. So really the recommendation is, is just replace your batteries on a regular basis. Um, most folks will change them about every six months or so. Mine will actually last well over a year in my base because these preamps don't draw much current, but for good practices and so you just don't worry about it, just replace them every six months and you'll be fine. So more information about LHZ preamps, just go to lhzpreamps.com. Uh, you can buy them at our store there on the website for domestic sales. Uh, we sell internationally through eBay and we're also on Reverb. Uh, we got some exciting things coming in the next couple months. A uh, new design is coming out that's going to be even easier to install. It's the same component, same circuit, just a smaller form factor. And we finally move the uh, connectors in a, in a way that's easier to manage. Uh, so I think that'll be good for everybody. And we also have the stomp box uh, version coming out. So this is a LHZ. This is a HasLab clone inside of a stomp box pedal called the Hazard Lamps. Um, this is really cool. This is our first demo unit. It's going out for uh, uh, some road testing in the next couple weeks. So we expect this to be on the market in the uh, next month or so. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.